Revival Fellowship. It's a good day. It's another day in the house of the Lord. We declare that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Victory Bible Fellowship is a Bible-believing church. Worship is central to our lives and ministry as a church. It is not merely preparation for teaching and preaching. It's an end to itself. Our vision is clear. We win souls, consolidate, and make disciples. This is accomplished through cell groups, street evangelism, our workplaces, businesses, and community engagement. Comprehensive youth and children's ministry makes up a large part of what we do, and their development is vital to our growth and outreach. We continue to support missions to the nations of Africa through partnerships, establishment of churches, and Christian schools. We encourage you to share in worship as we sing, dance, clap, and raise our hands in adoration to the Lord. You are a child of God, called, called by his name, justified, placed in his kingdom, and you will always be his child. So this morning, I want us to recognize who we are. Our God is worthy. He is worthy of all our honor, all our praise, our adoration. He is worthy, and he has made us worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we think, you know, that we, oh, I'm so messed up. So many things are not happening for me. But remember who you are. You are worthy. He has made us worthy. He did that all by himself. Now, you remember this woman who was an outcast. And she went into the Pharisee's house washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried in them with her hair. And Jesus said, you know what, Simon? You didn't give me any water to wash my feet. You didn't give me any kiss or anything. But this woman gave me extravagant worship. She worshipped me in spirit and in truth because she had a lot going on. This morning, we had a lot going on. And Jesus himself has delivered us, brought us in. And so there is nothing that he would withhold from us. So we can hold on, stay connected to our King of Kings, stay connected through worship, through praise, through adoration. You know, just, just lift up our God this morning and know that he is for us. We have been made worthy. The blood still and will never lose its power. He has ransomed us. And nothing that the enemy could bring against us can stand against the blood. So let's worship him this morning. Let's know that, you know, last week, whatever my failures are or what they were, the blood has covered them. The blood of Jesus is still flowing this morning. So if one of us is here, we have a million. Because we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. We have praise on our lips. We can magnify and worship our King of Kings because he is worthy and he has made us worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read with me Psalm 98. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm had gotten him the victory. 
The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly shown in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with the harp, with the harp and with the voice of a psalm. With the trumpets and the sound of the cornet, make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he hath come to judge the earth with righteousness. Shall he judge the world and the people with equity? This is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Let none of us feel that we don't have what it takes this morning to praise the Lord. We have everything. He has made us worthy this morning. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Father God, this morning we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for us. Lord, we give you praise. We magnify you, Lord God. We lift up our voices to you, Lord, because you are good. You are great. You are merciful. You are kind. Lord, you are good. This morning, we bless you. We honor you, Lord, and we invite your presence here today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are present with us this morning. Your presence is in this place, my God. Holy Spirit, we give this meeting over to you and we say, have your way here, Lord. We want you here, Lord God. We roll out the red carpet for you and we say, come, Holy Spirit. We love you. Come, Holy Spirit. We worship you. Come, Holy Spirit. Tabernacle with us here, my God. Lord God, we lift up every person here, everyone who is coming. Lord God, those who are on their way, my God, we ask you to hasten their footsteps, bring them here safely. Father God, we expect your mighty power, Lord God, to be unleashed in this place today, my God. Lord, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we will continue to rejoice and be glad in you. Thank you, Lord God, for the chains that have been broken. Thank you, Lord God, for the captives that have been set free. Thank you, Lord God, for the minds that have been renewed to your love and to your goodness. Lord, thank you for your presence here with us. We give you the glory and the praise. And we decree to principalities and powers and rulers of darkness that this day, this day, we trample upon you. You have no place in our midst this morning. We say, flee, flee from among us, flee from our midst. You are disarmed and we continue to enforce your defeat. Lord God, we bless you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.
to be praised, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We welcome you in here, God. Have your way, Jesus, and fill this place. Hallelujah. We came to give God a praise. We came to worship the name of Jesus, our risen Savior. God, we thank you for our space here today. Let's open up our mouths and give God a praise. Are you happy to be in the house?
today? Do you feel free today? Let freedom fill the room. Let Jesus fill the room. Where there is Jesus, there is freedom. Where there is freedom, there is Jesus. Let freedom fill the room. Let healing fill the room. Let prosperity fill the room. Let guidance fill the room. Let protection fill the room. Wherever you are, hallelujah. Let Jesus, Jesus is in the room. Jesus is in the room. You got to remember, whatever room you go in, Jesus is in the room.
victory glory to God hallelujah. hallelujah hallelujah come on let's just take some time to give God a praise come on let's just have a praise fresh a praise break right here come on lift your hands into the heavens open up your mouths everybody we don't know if this is our last time you could walk out of that door and this could be your last time to praise God Give him a praise. Oh God, we thank you, Jesus. So Lord, if I find faith.
to 
Let your will be done here as 
communion table is prepared and we are all invited no one is left out we're all invited so regardless of where we have been what we have done or left undone whether we have had victories 
or defeats. We are all invited to the communion table today because this invitation provides unity. That is, if we will allow it, it provides peace. Again, if we will allow it. It offers grace and forgiveness. If we will accept it, all of that is at the communion table. And so each of us, whether we believe it or not, is a mix of struggle or victory or somewhere in, in between. But even then, we are still invited to the communion table. Amen? In Micah chapter 6 and verse 8, the scripture says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God that's what he has asked us to do so God has shown us what is good, amen the ultimate love that he has for us is the fact that he gave Jesus to die for us that is love and so we may not think we have much but we have more than we can eat we have more than we can wear. It is because of his goodness why we have all of that. So God has taught us to love. And so we, as we prepare our hearts for communion this morning, I want us to think of the millions of people who do not even as much as hear about Jesus. Therefore, they have no idea of all the blessing and everything that comes with the relationship that we have with Jesus. So be mindful of that this morning as you eat. So as you do that, just ask the Holy Spirit to help us. He's helping me to not see those people as statistics, but to see them as people. These are people he died for. People who he's calling just like he called us. So this morning, service, please come. This morning as you receive the elements and prepare to eat, just remember Jesus' love. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they have done. That was love. When he looked at a man on another cross receiving punishment for his actions that he deserved, what did Jesus say? Today, you will be with me in paradise. That was love. The invitation to eat today of this covenant meal is an invitation to us to live a life worthy of the calling we have received. To humble ourselves, to be patient, to bear one another in love, and to make every effort to maintain the unity that Christ died for. And because... According to the scripture, there is one body, one spirit, just as we are called to one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all. We are called to love one another, brothers and sisters, to bear with one another, to lift each other up. Not to break down, but to lift each other up. That's what the Lord is calling us to do. You have the elements.
So Jesus, when he had taken the bread, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So Lord, we thank you this morning for your body that was broken for us and for mankind. Lord, help us to see people the way you see them. Not people who look like us or people who speak like us. But Lord, let us see people the way you see them. People who are bound for hell if we do not win them for you. So Father, we thank you for your body that was broken. We thank you for your precious blood that was shed so that all will have the life that you want them to, to have, which is everlasting life. So Father, we give thanks for your broken body and we give thanks for your blood. And as we eat this morning and as we drink, let us be mindful of all the people that you died for and that you want to see come to know you. We give you thanks this morning and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Let us eat together.
we know what time it is right now. What time is it? Time to give to the Lord. I know some people are looking at their watches to see the time. It is time to give to the Lord. And not just to give to the Lord, but to give your best to the Lord. Amen? Here's what the scripture says in Proverbs 11 and verses 24 to 25. It says, There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. So, it's pretty simple. The person who scatters or gives increases even more. So, get a picture of you just throwing seeds out into an acre or a couple acres. Just throwing seeds. Think of yourself just giving at every occasion. When we um, went to the celebration for Sister Leonie and we heard, I heard individuals talk about how much she gave. I know about her giving. You know you have experienced her generosity. But you know even when we are gone, it will be said of us. It will be said of us. We know that Victor Bible Fellowship is a giving church and we are all a part of Victor Bible Fellowship. So we fall under that umbrella. But we also have to realize that we have to sow seeds in order to get a harvest. So as it says, God has blessed generously. How does he do that? By increasing what we have. He replenishes our supply through every act of giving that we're engaging. But when we hold on to everything like this and store it up for ourselves, we miss out on God's provision and the joy that comes through our giving. So let us just open our hands wide this morning. Open our hearts acknowledge God as the giver of all good things and then make a decision to give your best to him. Amen? So do that right now. The information to give will be on the screen. God bless you. Victory Bible Fellowship thanks you for partnering with us in the building of God's kingdom. Victory Bible Fellowship believes that a part of worshiping God is expressed in our giving. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6 to 8, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your hearts how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. We thank God for you, and we believe the seeds that you sow will produce a harvest of generosity in you. The information to give is on the screen. Thanks for being a blessing. Good morning, Victor Bible Fellowship. Good afternoon, Victor Bible Fellowship. Let's just stand as we bless the tithe and offering, please. Hallelujah. God is a good God. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence all around. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you today. We bless you. We praise you. We give you all the honor, mighty God. You are worthy of our praise. Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to be in your house, Father God, to worship you together as a church. Father, we thank you, God, for the ability to give. Thank you, mighty God, that Victor Bible Fellowship, every single person here, God, has a giving spirit. Father, we give without complaining. We give, mighty God, without murmuring. We give without pressure, my God, because your word says so. And so, Father, we thank you for the ability to bring back into your house what you have provided for us. Father, we thank you that Victory Bible Fellowship is a giving church. And as we give to the nation, my God, we thank you for your abundance. 
give you thanks, Father. We give you praise for all you do and continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good, mor Good morning, Victory Bible Fellowship Church. We are so glad that you decided to spend your Sunday morning with us, whether it be in person or online. Here are some of Victory's announcements. Youth group is every Friday from 7.30 to 9 p.m. If you are between the ages of 13 and 18, we highly encourage you to join. We break down the word, do icebreakers, and discuss topics surrounding our youth. It's always a safe space. We hope to see you there. Believers meeting is every Tuesday from 7.30 to 9 p.m. The current discussions are about character studies from the Bible, so ensure that you make every effort to join and learn more about the Word. Prayer meetings are on Mondays to Fridays at 5 to 6 a.m. on the prayer line to discuss the importance of prayer and to receive constant encouragement and motivation through God's Word. Sunday service is every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. where we come together as a church to praise, worship, and learn more about the Word of God. But you already know that because you're already here. Those were our announcements. Have a blessed week and enjoy today's service. We are often told. Praise the Lord. Let's stand. Lord, you're good and your mercy endures forever. We acknowledge you this morning and we give you thanks for your faithfulness. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God. Your word will go forth, strength and power. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you'll watch over your word to perform it. And today, we thank you. There's a work of the Spirit to be done. And shall a great impact on the lives of your people. We thank you. The word goes forth. It will not be hindered. Much, much fruit shall be born from your word today. We give you praise. We give you thanks for all of this. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. We're going to jump right into things. You know, we have some um, special meetings to do later. Let's go into the word. You know, this past week, um, I had an experience that I believe kind of prepared me to share what I want to share with us today. In well, it's just part of it, really, because um, I need to go into it a little deeper than we than we want to, that we're allowed to do today. So, I guess might make a, a two-part series or so out of it for the time that we have. But um, I had an experience last week, you know, I had made some decisions a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one, one decision that, I, you know, in particular. And then I realized that one of my daughters did not take very kind to that decision. And her whole disposition kind of threw me off. And um, I realized that it kind of impacted me in terms of my peace, what God was saying. And I stopped, and then the Lord said to me, um, how did you come about making that decision? We didn't discuss it. And um, it's something for you to pay attention to. So I stopped, and the Lord began to talk to me about discernment. And um, I want to use a little bit of that today to kind of, you know, unveil something as we go forward, and there are so many times where we have made decisions or draw conclusions or just happen to take the advice of others, I'm not discern if this is what the Lord is saying or doing. And, um, you know, there are the nine fruit of the Spirit, but Today I want to highlight discernment for a reason, because I believe in the coming season we are going to be tested in that area. So especially in this age, you have to know what is happening. And the Bible says like the children of Issachar, they understood the times and the seasons they are living in. On the, in the earth right now is a major, major explosion of disinformation and misinformation. And we have to be able to discern what is happening. 
and how to make proper decisions about what God wants us to do. Amen? And think of it. We are in environments where things are happening around us all the time. And the deception is, is that all the things that make us feel good or just feel comfortable, we can accept them without even trying to discern. Is this God? Think of it. All the, those of you who are active on social media, all the little sayings that you get all the time. Some of them they sound good. They sound like, they sound logical and, and, you know, but when you think about some of them that you hear, they are filled with, I mean, they sound cute and everything, but at the heart of it is like a self-reliant spirit or a humanistic spirit or something that takes away from the dependency of God. And it just seep into us and we just, you know, just operate as if, you know, no big deal. So, I want us to take a look at this. So, the, according to dictionary.com, discernment is the quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. An act of perceiving. Um, to perceive by sight or some other sense or by the intellect. To see, recognize, or apprehend. To distinguish mentally, recognize the distinct difference. In other words, to be able to pick out what is good and from a spiritual standpoint, what is of God. Amen? Because sometimes you know, we kind of tie English words to, to the scriptures where you know, it's not exclusively in a spiritual context. It's a, just a language used. But in our context, it's basically to, you know, make a sharp distinction to what is of God and what is not of God. Amen? And I just wanted us to, as an introduction, to bring out a few little things here that is important. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in that particular scripture, it says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about spiritual abilities... The Spirit gives us, that Spirit gives us. I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speeches, idols. And incidentally, this morning, you know, we, while we're praying, there are two things came up because I'm listening to hear what God is saying. Someone had um, questions about idols and to dismantle idols. So, so I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. But, so, but the same Spirit is a source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same Spirit who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us as we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives us the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles. Another, the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. That's what we're highlighting today. Let's finish the rest of it. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown tongues, languages, um, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So we see it says that he gives the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. I don't think we take enough time to figure out if something is coming from another spirit. It is very, very important that we kind of get acquainted with what the ways of God involves, what the Word of God instructs us in, so that when we hear things and we receive things, we know how we are to operate. Very important. 
Um, another scripture I want us to look at um, is in Acts chapter 16. And this is basically, I thought we take it from verse 16 to 19. One day as they were, as we were going down to a place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. Now there's nothing wrong with that. Right? If they are men of God, they are men of God and they have come to say how to be saved. You think it's a regular you know, message Talk about who these people are, what their function is. But no, I want to see the spirit of discernment at work here. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. So here we see now a situation where because of what she's doing and the type of spirit she's operating, she's trying to fellowship with the apostles. And kind of like, you know, yeah, we're all of the same spirit here operating. I'm, I'm doing divination stuff and you're operating. So we're kind of like, hey, you know, these are, and they didn't want that kind of umbrella or association. And they discerned that that is something that is anti-Christ and that it had an ulterior motive to it and it's trying to be a counterfeit to what they're doing. So even when you hear things that sound spiritual, it needs to have some kind of discernment about what's going on. You know, you can hear somebody, you know, telling you something about what the Lord said or a scripture, but something, it is, there's just something troubling about your spirit that don't, don't sit right with you. Because the Spirit of God puts that inside of you. Amen? You might not can't quite put your finger on it, but if you pray over it some more, you go and search the scriptures to understand God, then you get some kind of understanding that this is not exactly either what that scripture is saying or what that person is trying to do or whatever is happening. Very important. But we just don't go about our business like that. Now listen, we are believers that just listen to people talk about things of investment and things about on different counts of what to do. We don't even stand some time to figure out, is this something relative pertaining to me? And my, because everybody's situation is different. People are going here and you know, seeing different diet plans when your whole physiology is different from somebody else and chemistry is different. So what, what are we pausing to do? Are we just being flowing in what everybody else is doing? We're pausing and as um, Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding or other people's understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he'll give us direction in terms of discernment. Because we cannot just be going through life in this season as it is right now. We're going to have to make hard decisions as individuals, as families, as a church, and we want to be sure that we're not caught up in a reaction to the world or we are really hearing God. This is so important. I don't have time to go into all the scripture. But let's take, for example, somebody like, and, and if you say you're going to believe the Bible, you have to believe the Bible from cover to cover. Let me just give you an example of what we're going to talk about. If you're going to make a decision based on your lack, are you in line with what, how God thinks and how he operates? And sometimes it might be something that's dire, but you have to find a God. Or what are you saying? Take for someone like Isaac in Genesis 26. It was time of famine, and he's wanted to move like everybody else to go and find somewhere else to. And God said, no, don't do that. Stay right there in Gerar. Plant your seeds right there. No, I mean, this is totally counterproductive. Who plants in the time of famine? But God said, plant right there. And the Bible says, increase threefold. The man became prosperous, very prosperous until, you know, they, they envied him. So that's discerning and going to God and figuring out what we ought to do. Not just taking instruction from somebody else and, you know, hey, well, you know, um, there's, a, there's a 
housing crisis taking place now, just, just for an example. And the neighbor is selling his house. The other one is refinancing. This one is doing that. And he said, well, everybody's doing something. I need to do something. Why? Have you spoken to the Lord about it? I'm going to be clear because the, you know, the Bible said we're not supposed to be conformed to the world. Do you know that a lot of experts are there funneling people to direction because they want everybody to go that so they can go a different direction? That happens all the time. People give you stock tips or whatever. Let's ask the Lord. Discern what is coming before so we can make proper decisions. Amen? Why is that important? Because it's the way the Lord wants us to be wise in our doings and how he wants us to, to understand ourselves. Look at Proverbs 14. All right? So, Proverbs 14 is talking about discernment and not just having this knee-jerk reaction to do things. In verse 15, only simpletons believe everything they are told. The prudent carefully considers their steps. See that? The wise are cautious and avoid danger. Fools plunge ahead with reckless confidence. Yeah, I know because, you know, Tom Brown tell me to do this. Yeah, he knows everything, so I'm just going to do it. 18. Simpletons are clothed with foolishness. But a prudent are crowned with knowledge. As I said, I'm just giving us a, just a preview of a few things you want to, you know, point to. So I, I pulled a few scriptures about discernment that I want to start to meditate on now. Because like everything else, you receive by faith. And there's a lack somewhere or, 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 or your judgment off or you're, there's just not, not, a, not, not a built up in a certain area of faith. Then you pull the scriptures out and you meditate on them and you begin to go before God that he can sharpen your spiritual senses in that area. Amen? So, um, this is from the ESV version. These scriptures I'm pulling out here. I have just about three minutes or so that I'm going to go through this. So 1 John 4, it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For what? Many false prophets have gone out into the world. So it is telling you that not even in church circles, don't be gullible, just listen to everything, but test and see if this is of God. Amen? In Hebrews chapter 5, all this is ESV version, verse 14. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. So discernment even had a development in itself. Amen? Hallelujah. Philippians 1. 9 to 10. And it is my prayer that you, your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. Why? So that you may approve what is excellent so you, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Oh, so, you know, it is something for us that is useful that we can get into that place that God wants us to. Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, and what is acceptable, what is perfect. This is so important in this day and age where so much information is coming to us from all in search of different media, information, people. Everybody has something to say on every subject matter. Everybody have to say it. Everybody have all knowings. You know that name? I don't want to call that name. You know who I'm talking about. That all-knowing name. 
So, discernment. I don't know where I stop to say, God, I made some decisions in the past and, um, you know, perhaps I didn't even check carefully as to if this is what you want me to do or how you want me to handle this. But I want to bring us Victor Bible Fellowship a place of sensitivity in the era of discerning things in the spirit. Amen? Before we are quick to say things, before we are quick to do or make decisions, discern. So God, I want to be guided in this era so I can know. And why it is important? Because we are living in a world where people don't operate like we are and we can't operate like them. And we can't operate in their counsel either. But in the counsel of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. I was telling you that the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand because they are spiritually discerned. There we go about telling people certain things and they don't know God, they can't understand and so they give you some counter advice to what God already spoke to or, or the idea. You, you, maybe an idea is in your spirit. You haven't even developed it, but God put it in there. You don't even know if it's God, but you're there telling somebody about it. And it don't make sense to them because they can't discern. And they're telling you something else and you're told, forget it. Change your mind and do something else. Gone in a whole different direction because we have not disciplined ourselves to say, God, I know this is of you or I'm not sure, but I'm bringing this before I can have the discernment of God. Amen? We need to do that. We need to do that so we can function properly. Um, so, the council that we operate in and the people that we listen to and the things that we hear and how things operate, we have to make sure that we are have that sense that this is God and that we're caught up in our emotions, our, in our, our heavy investment in people that we quote-unquote trust or think are influential. You know, there's a thing out there, you know, influencers. That's why I need to be discerning. Because they're going to influence our children. And we have to discern what is happening with our children, what's happening in our house, so what is happening. You have to discern that the right information is coming and that God is guiding and operating. Last scripture, 2 Samuel 16. Now, this whole story, you know, I want to see this. This is based on prayer. Because this is a rebellion of Absalom against David. And now, this guy who used to counsel David is now working for David, but he's in Absalom's camp. So we pick it up from, from verse 1, actually. Um, actually, verse 5, 2 Samuel 16 from verse 15. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the army of Israel arrived at Jerusalem accompanied by Ahithophel. When David's friend Hushai the Akrite arrived, he went immediately to see Absalom. Long live the king, he exclaimed. Long live the king. Is this the way you treat your friend David? Absalom asked him, why aren't you with him? I'm here because I belong to the man who is chosen by the Lord and by all the men of Israel, Hushai replied. And enemy, anyway, why shouldn't I serve you just as I was your father's advisor? Now I will be your advisor. Then Absalom turned to Ahithophel and said to him, what should I do next? So here's a novice or a person in rebellion, but he's in place of the king because he overthrew the king and he's looking for advice as to how to proceed, but not discerning if the information he's getting is from the Lord or not because he's not even thinking about that. When you're in rebellion, when you're at a certain place, you're not thinking about discernment. So we jump down to 2 Samuel 16, actually 17, going to the next chapter from verse 1. Now Ahithophel urged Absalom, let me choose 12,000 men to start out rather after David tonight. And I will catch up with him while he is weary and discouraged. He and his troops will panic and everyone will run away. Then I will kill only the king and I will bring all the people back to you as a bride returns to her husband. After all, is it only, is it 
only the one man's life you seek, then you will be at peace with all the people. This plan seemed good to Absalom and all the elders of Israel. But then Absalom said, bring Hushai the Akrite. Let's see what he thinks about this. When Hushai arrived, Absalom told him what Ahithophel had said. Then he asked, what is your opinion? Should we follow Ahithophel's advice? or not? Um, If not, what do you suggest? Well, Hushai replied to Absalom, this time Ahithophel has made a mistake. Now, he don't know that he's operating a deceiving spirit there. You know your father and his men. They are mighty warriors. Right now, they are as enraged as a mother bear who has been robbed of her, ki- of her cubs. And remember that your father is an experienced man of war. He won't be spending the night among the troops. He has probably already hidden in some pit or cave. And when he comes out to a- and attacks and a few of your men fall, there will be panic among your troops. And the word will spread that Absalom's men are being slaughtered. Then even the bravest soldiers, though they have a heart of a lion, will be paralyzed with fear. For all Israel knows what a man, what a mighty warrior your father is and how courageous his men are. I recommend that you mobilize the entire army of Israel, bringing them from as far as away as Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south. That way you will have an army as numerous as the sand on the seashore. And I advise that you personally lead the troops. When we find David, will fall on him like dew that falls on the ground. Then neither he nor any of his men will be left alive. And if David were to escape to some town, you will have all Israel there at your command. Then we can take ropes and drag the walls of the town into the nearest valley until every stone is torn down. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, Hushai's advice is better than Ahithophel's. For the Lord had determined to defeat the council of Ahithophel, which really was a better plan so that he could bring disaster on Absalom. Discernment. We need to hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. We're making major decisions for our families and for ourselves and our church and different things. We want the counsel of the Lord. We want to know that we have sought God and that we're not just taking advice of everybody else. Even good and nice and decent people. If they, are don't, if they don't have the spirit of God, it's an ungodly counsel. Unless it is specific that God says, you know, go and listen to so and so. I'm going to send you so and so. You will hear information that is relevant to what you have to do. But it's still your dependence in on God and leading you. Amen? So, discernment is where we want to have it. It's a part, it's one of the gifts, but we need to spend a time this week. I don't know who needs to hear this today or who will be challenged in this. Think of it now. This morning, Pastor Pat had some vision or dream about being connected. And it literally borne out. If there wasn't time to think about it. I said, God, what is the message in this? Discernment. So, whether it be our dream, plans, operation and ministry, whatever it is, let us bring ourselves to that place so we can exercise spiritual understanding of what we're doing as we come about. Amen? Praise the Lord. Father, we give you thanks for your faithfulness over your people. Like the children of Issachar, we will know the times and the seasons we are living in. And we will make the right decision by trusting you, by listening to you, by asking of you. That we will not be like those of old who have done things according to the circumstance that they face or the fear or any kind of outside pressure but know what God is saying that we will show the Lord mighty and strong in this time. We thank you Father for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are often told God loves you. But what does that really mean? That some impersonal force galaxies away may consider you from time to time? Or that you are a single drop in a vast ocean of humanity and God cares for all of it. There are billions of lives, billions of stories, 
Can we really believe he has great destinies planned for all of them? Surely the ruler of the universe has more important affairs than to notice the needs of one singular individual. But hear this, nothing could be further from the truth. When God says, I love you, it means that he crafted every detail of your being. Your every feature is his perfect design. His mind perceives your worries and your thoughts. His heart is broken by your pain. You are his child, created in his image. Your value exceeds all the riches of earth. Your worth extends beyond the stars. And though you may be unaware, he's carefully constructing the events of your life to build his kingdom. If you are willing, he can and will achieve wonders through your hands. It is the deepest passion, the most meaningful promise. It is your security, your hope, and your future. It is the truth beyond doubt. God loves you. holy, infinite God, beheld your pain, perceived your heart, and determined that your soul was worth dying for. From the manger, to the cross, to the empty tomb, it is all a story of profound love, of a Savior who rescued his children from darkness of a blameless king who declared that no sacrifice was too great for the sake of his beloved creation. Why did Jesus come to earth? He came for you. Thank you for joining our service today. We believe that you have been extremely blessed. Raise your right hand with me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and grant you his peace. Go in the grace of the Lord. Amen.